So I don't think anybody could argue uh, when we say 2022 has been qu quite a year. We've seen the tail end, hopefully, tail end of a pandemic. We've seen catastrophic flooding. We've seen war and the loss of a queen. Now, through all of this, we actually, there was a, there was a bright spot. You may have missed it, but the internet told us that over the summer, George Jetson was born. Now, if you're like me, you might have seen it in your feed, maybe smile, chuckle a little bit, thought that's cute, swipe left and on to something else. But I kept coming back to it. I kept thinking, you know, in my day to day, I'd be on a, a, a Zoom call and I, I would think, gosh, what did that look like for the Jetsons? What would George think if he was here today to see this? So over and over I came, came to that and it kind of like stuck with me. So I decided to dig deeper. And then that question kept coming to me, what would George think? And then more importantly, why does it matter? Well, Smithsonian Magazine says that the Jetson stands as the single most important piece of 20th century futurism. Now, that's pretty impressive given the fact that the Jetsons, the original Jetsons, ran for one season, 24 episodes in 1962. Yet, to this day, is still referenced. I got this notification, this was in a newsletter that I got a week ago, and it was, this was dated you know, October 1st. So you can see that the Jetsons, when we're talking about technology, technological developments, that the Jetsons is still used as a barometer to see how we stand versus what, where they said we would be. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna talk about, we're gonna take you back there. Um, this is Skypad Apartments. This is where the Jetsons live. Now, contrary to what I thought and I think popular belief, the Jetsons, and I'm stating this like this is scientific fact, right? Um, the Jetsons was filmed in the, or they lived in uh, Skypad Apartments, 4,000 feet above the, the earth. Not in outer space, 4,000 feet above the earth. The uh, pillars that it was built on were hydraulic, so they could be raised and lowered depending on the uh, weather patterns. It's a pretty cool concept. And then as I got into this, I thought that, that looked a little bit familiar. And then I realized it was inspired by the Space Needle in Seattle. Interestingly, the Space Needle was revealed to the world for the 1962 World's Fair. Happened to be the same year that the, uh, the Jetsons. Um, now, one thing, the, the Space Needle is not 4,000 feet, it's just over 600 feet, but with technology today, we are almost capable of reaching those, those heights, the, uh, the elevation. So there are buildings that are being constructed today that are approaching 3,000 feet. So it might be good to maybe have that flying car that the, uh, the Jetsons promised us. This is what technology was promised. So today we're going to talk about three things. We're going to talk about things that, that really are part of everyday life. Communication, automation, and transportation. Transportation is the big one. That's what everybody wants to talk about, usually because of that flying car. But let's start here with, with um, communications. This is what we were promised. They were actually pretty smart because they also realized we also needed something like this to help us through our, some of our meetings. Now, we focus today on the background, right, where you, where you have your... You can blur your background, virtual background, but they were smarter. They realized that maybe the foreground needs a little bit of work. Um, so some of the, the tools today actually have, I've seen that they have filters where you can add lipstick and, and whatnot. One thing to bear in mind as we talk about all of these technologies is we actually still have 40 years to go. George Jetson was born, according to Wikipedia, born this year. We don't meet him until he's 40 years old. So that gives us 40 years between now and then to maybe catch up if, if we're behind. We'll, we'll decide at the end of this. If you tell me if we're behind or not. So what we're going to do is let's, let's take a look. We're going to go back 40 years. To determine how far we can go forward, how much we can do in 40 years, I thought, let's go back. Since we can't go forward, let's go back and see what we did. So 40 years ago, this phone, this beauty, was actually uh, released by Mitsubishi. 
And uh, this was called a video phone. It had a one and a half inch black and white screen that uh, promised one frame every three seconds. So it's kind of hardly a, a video phone, certainly not by today's standards. This actually retailed under today's dollars, just under $5,000. Now, technology today, this far surpasses the video quality versus what we had here and at a fraction of the cost. But this is just in your, in your pocket. Where can it go? On steroids. This is a friend of mine, Jeff Cochran. He's a, a keynote speaker. This is how keynotes can be delivered today. Now, yes, obviously some of this was fueled by the pandemic, but this is actually at a Tony Robbins um, conference and he's speaking uh, to a global audience using technology. My question is, what do you think George Jetson would say to this? Okay, automation. This is Rosie. If, you, if you've ever seen the series, you know Rosie, right? She's the, the little bit of a sassy, um, the, the maid, the robotic maid that they had. She was mobile. She got around, very chatty, um, but didn't do anything, you know, she, basic chores when she chose to do the chores. So let's go back. Let's see, what were we looking at robotic-wise 40 years ago? Well, this little guy um, was carrying, could roll around on wheels and uh, had arms that could, could move and hold things that's holding that antiquated piece of paper that we used to get our news on. Uh, looks a little bit like R2-D2, don't you think, from, from Star Wars? Now, let's just see what we're looking at today. Now, today, think about what you have in your home. If you have a Roomba, Right? There's, there's robotics. If you have a pool and you've got a pool cleaner, there's, you've got your robotic pool cleaner. So robotics are around us. Siri, Alexa, there's plenty of voice, uh, artificial, um, you know, voice robotics out there that you have access to every single day without even thinking about it. But let's put that on steroids and let's see what else is capable. This is real. This is happening today. The character on the left is Optimus. Optimus was uh, revealed, walked out on stage a few weeks back at uh, Tesla's um, AI day. Walked out on his, his or her own, no tether. They promise, they uh, have not seen this yet, but he's capable, he or she is capable of dancing. And I'm certain it's less embarrassing than watching Elon Musk dance. Um, Pretty impressive, walk down on stage. Here's where they're taking this. They promise we're going to be, have, be able to have a humanoid in our homes for around $20,000. That's less than most cars. Pretty impressive. Now, the character on the right, that was released by Boston Dynamics. That's Atlas. Now, Atlas does more than walk and dance a little bit. Atlas, you can see videos. If you Google, you'll see Atlas going through a parkour course and actually literally, literally doing backflips. It's quite impressive. I've never once saw Rosie doing a backflip. Look at the uncanny, uncanny likeness. The fellow on the right, I, I, I saw Optimus and I just thought it looked really, really familiar and I couldn't figure out why. And I thought, slap some gl glowing red eyes on it and a full set of teeth and you've got the Terminator from 1984. The difference is, while Optimus walked out on stage, this is how the Terminator was able to, quote unquote, walk back in the day. So clearly technology has gone, gone pretty, pretty far. All right, this is it. This is the big one, right? Everybody wants to talk. When you, when you talk about the Jetsons, they all think of the flying car, and they're like, well, where's my flying car? I don't have it yet. We're clearly way behind where we should be today. Well, I would argue that's incorrect. What's he doing in this picture? He's driving. What in the world does he have a wheel in his hand for? Today, we have 1,400 autonomous completely autonomous, driverless vehicles on the road. There's no George Jetson in, that car, in these cars. We have 43 million driver-assisted, auto, um, autonomous but not fully, some type of driver-assist, level one assist 
43 million. So at least he could take his hands off the wheel. So I would argue we're way ahead of where this is, minus the fact that we don't fly just yet. Now, let's do this again. Let's go back 40 years. Let's see, what did we look like? What did the cars look like 40 years ago? Honestly, not a whole lot different than what they look like today. If you saw this down the road, you wouldn't, you wouldn't think twice about it, right? It just blends with everything else. Now, to today's technology looks a little bit more like this. Still has four wheels, doesn't have wings, but the technology is there. It's fully electric. It has software that allows it to be autonomous and it can go from zero to 60 in less than two seconds. That's staggering to me. I don't know what that feels like. I mean, that is those are speeds that actually were reserved for the exotics back in the day, you know, the, the, the Lamborghinis, Ferraris, Bugattis. So now that's in a Tesla. And very, very, well, more and more attainable every single day. But what's missing? Wings. Until now. You thought the story was over, didn't you? Samson Sky promises this vehicle just been approved for FAA uh, testing. Can fly at 13,000 feet. Carries a bit of a price, price tag. The base level is $170,000, so it's not for everybody. But road ready, road approved, FAA testing is coming. 2,000 have been ordered already. 2,000, so there's a lot of uh, individuals that can afford a minimum. $170,000 a vehicle. Um, but if you think about it, this is going to allow you to get to, to fly to that apartment at 4,000 feet. So when we get there, this is, when we have those, those apartments, when we have to put them there, it should we need to, this can actually get them, get us to there. So today what we've talked about, the big ones in our life, the big uh, aspects of our life, Communication, how we're communicating. Automation, our day-to-day -day chores, you know, how we can maybe get assistance from robotics. And then we've talked about transportation. That's the big one. Everybody likes to hear about that one. So with that, if we look and see the, the amount of, of innovation we've had over the last 40 years, I think there's no question we're killing it compared to what the Jetsons said we would be doing. We still have 40 more years to go. And in that, 40 years, I would say the sky is the limit. Now, it still begs the question, what would George say? I kind of think he'd be speechless. Thank you.